in this class we will discuss uh, how work energy theorem can be extended to the case of rotational motion uh, so you know uh, the general statement of work energy theorem is that uh, work done on a body uh, in bringing it from uh, a point a to a point b is equal to change in kinetic energy of the body okay ka is the kinetic energy at the initial point kb at the kinetic energy at the final point so change in kinetic energy is equal to work done on the body so this is uh, where, where uh, this uh, work done on the body in bringing it from a to b is given by integral uh, f dot dr in general integrated from the initial point uh, whose position vector is ri to the final point whose position vector is rb this is the statement of work energy theorem now um, let us consider a motion involving both translation and rotation in this context how we will uh, we can uh, let's say how the form of work energy theorem can be applicable to uh, this type of a general motion involving both translation and rotation so the idea is that we can um, uh, write down statement of work energy theorem uh, separately for translational motion as well as rotational motion okay just as we have done we have written the expressions for angular momentum torque uh, kinetic energy etc for uh, translation motion and rotation motion separately uh, and added them together for a general motion uh, so in this case also for a motion involving both translation and rotation uh, work energy theorem can be separately stated for translational part as well as rotational part so so, so that we can have a general expression uh, for uh, this motion we'll see uh, so first let us consider the translational part actually this we have done uh, before in the in the unit work and energy uh, but uh, let us redo it again so uh, consider the translational motion okay uh, that means uh, the general motion involves both translation and rotation but let us consider the translation part so the force acting on the body we can write as uh, mass into suppose the, the mass of the body is m so mass into rate of change of velocity okay mass into acceleration second law now um, suppose uh, the body so uh, let me let me use uh, capital m here instead of small m so we have a rigid body here not a particle uh, so its total mass is capital m okay now suppose uh, um, within a small time delta t uh, the body undergoes a small displacement delta r okay or in the limiting case when delta t tends to zero we can take this delta r as the differential length okay uh, so um, within a small time dt um, let's say the center of mass is shifted so the situation is uh, uh, you have a rigid body of any arbitrary shape it undergoes uh, translation as well as rotation okay uh, so let us say um, the center of mass of the body undergoes a, a small displacement uh, dr okay uh, within a time dt so we can write dr is equal to velocity of the center of mass v into dt okay so if then then the work done during the small displacement is f dot dr is equal to we are looking at the translational part of the motion okay so force is mass times dv by dt where this velocity is the uh, velocity of center of mass dot v dt okay now here um, this this part that is uh, the derivative of velocity times the small change in time is equal to the small ch differential change in velocity okay uh, this part uh, we have discussed uh, for a general derivative 
uh, we get uh, a small change in the dependent variable so here the variable is v so we get a small increment or, or a differential change in v uh, so if i substitute that here so f dot dr becomes um, m v dot d okay or m d v dot v uh, since dot product is commutative we can write it like this and this expression on the right hand side i can uh, simplify as or i can rewrite as uh, derivative of half m v square okay let us uh, try to do it again uh, let's go back uh, derivative of half m v square will be half m uh, what is the derivative of v square v square is v dot v uh, so its derivative will be v dot dv plus dv dot v or 2 times v dot dv and the 2 will cancel with half. So we get um, mv dot d. Okay. So uh, this expression mv dot dv we can rewrite as derivative of half mv square. Now let us integrate both sides uh, from the initial position of the center of mass Ra. So initial position vector is Ra. And the final position vector is Rb, uh, f dot dr. Okay, so that is equal to right side will be, um, okay, uh, right side will be integral d of half m v square. So since the variable on the right side is uh, velocity, the, we have to put the corresponding limits of velocity. Let us say the velocity corresponding to the initial position Ra is Va. Velocity corresponding to the final position Rb is Vb. Okay. So left hand side I can uh, write as um, uh, Wba or simply uh, we, I can write as integral Ra to Rb. Let's use the same expression f dot dr. This is the work done uh, by the total external force uh, to produce a translational motion of the body. Okay. And the right side is, uh, in the integrand is a perfect derivative. So, the indi on integration, we get half mv square. Okay. And uh, when you put uh, the limits, Va to Vb. Okay. So, what you get is integral on, on putting the upper limit, we get half mvb square minus half m b a square okay let's call it equation one this is the um, expression for work energy theorem in the translational motion so work done by an external force um, in moving the body and in, in translating the body from initial position r a to final position r b is a uh, change in kinetic energy uh, due for the, the change in kinetic energy of translational motion. Okay. Now let us uh, look at the rotational part. Um, so the general motion uh, can be separated as translational motion plus rotation of the body around the center of mass. Right. So let us start with that. Uh, let us start with the expression for the torque of the body around the center of mass. So the torque. Uh, here, in order to derive the expression for the work energy theorem in translation motion, we started with the expression for force, uh, Newton's second law, force is equal to mass into acceleration. So, if you write the similar expression, Newton's second law, in the context of translate uh, rotational motion, uh, what is the instead of force, we have to write torque. So, okay, uh, so torque about the center of mass is equal to instead of mass we have to write moment of inertia about the center of mass i0 instead of uh, uh, the acceleration or rate of change of uh, linear velocity we have to write i0 into alpha angular acceleration which is um, i0 into rate of change of angular velocity okay now um, let us say within uh, a small time dt this uh, body rigid body is rotating through an angle d theta okay and uh, we know that the relationship between angle uh, small change in angle and angular velocity is uh, 
d theta we can write as omega into dt because omega is d theta by dt so a small change in angle we can write as angular velocity times the the, the corresponding change in time okay so let us uh, multiply this uh, torque with d theta so we get i0 d omega by dt omega dt okay and uh, left hand side uh, is has the dimension of work done because torque has the dimension of work done uh, it's force times displacement right torque is r cross f vector formula so its dimension is uh, uh, that of work done so the left hand side is uh, we can say it's a work done by the torque uh, in 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 rotating the body through a small angle theta okay what about the right hand side can we uh, let's try to rewrite the right hand side uh, on the right hand side this d omega by dt into dt i can write as uh, again d omega so this term d omega by dt the derivative of omega into small change in time will be equal to a small change in omega okay in the limiting case uh, it can be expressed as a differential uh, so here Okay. Therefore, um, torque into d theta is I0 omega times d omega. And this term you can write as a derivative of half I0 omega square. Okay. Um, if you take the derivative, we get 2 omega d omega, 2 and half will cancel. We get I0 omega d omega. Let's integrate both sides. Uh, left hand side we can integrate from an initial angle theta a to the final angle theta b tau 0 d theta and right side we can uh, give the corresponding um, limits of omega okay uh, initial angular velocity let us say omega a corresponding to the angle theta a and final angular velocity let us take omega b corresponding to the angle theta b d of half i0 omega square okay now okay i will write uh, here uh, left hand side uh, okay uh, left hand side let us keep it as such theta a theta b theta uh, right side integrand is a perfect square so we get half i0 omega square on uh, we, on substituting the limits we get half i0 omega b square minus half i0 omega a square that is called it equation 2 so this is the statement of work energy theorem for rotational motion okay left hand side gives the work done uh, by the torque in rotating the body from an initial orientation theta a to a final orientation theta b and uh, right side gives the change in kinetic energy of rotation kinetic energy for the rotation motion we know that half i0 omega square is the expression for the kinetic energy of rotation about the center of mass okay so the combining the two uh, we can say that the work energy theorem for a combined uh, translation and rotation motion can be expressed like this work done on a body in bringing the body from an initial point a to a final point b is equal to again change in kinetic energy of the body where the kinetic energy k is defined as uh, kinetic energy for translational motion translation of the center of mass of the rigid body plus kinetic energy for the rotation of the rigid body around the center of mass half mv square plus half i0 omega square so this is the work energy theorem in the context of uh, general motion involving both translation and rotation okay let us now apply this uh, work energy theorem uh, for a problem to see how it works okay so let us go back to the earlier uh, the problem that we discussed in the previous uh, class a drum rolling down a plane okay and uh, this time let's consider this problem a drum 
rolling down a plane. So now this time we will try to solve this problem uh, using this energy method by applying work energy theorem. Okay, so let us consider. Uh, okay, this is an inclined plane. Uh, inclined at an angle, let us say beta with the horizontal. So a drum is rolling down this plane. This is the cross section of the drum at its center of mass. Okay, its uh, radius is uh, b, total mass is m and it is uh, moving down the plane with a velocity b. The velocity of the center of mass is v. Okay, this is the angular velocity omega. So it, uh, let's assume that the drum starts from rust okay, and it rolls without slipping. So initial position, its uh, uh, velocity is zero. It's, start, it's starting from rust and it is rolling down without slipping. Let us. Uh, what we have to find out is um, find uh, the velocity, find the speed or velocity of the drum uh, of the center of mass. Okay. Velo find velocity of center of mass after it descends comes down descends through a height h okay so it starts from rust and it comes it, it rolls down the plane and suppose it comes down the plane uh, through a height h then uh, initial speed is zero it is starting from rust so what is the final speed when it comes down uh, when, when it descends a height h okay So here we are going to solve this problem using uh, this uh, work energy theorem. So first let us apply um, first let us apply the work energy theorem for translational motion. Okay. Um, so let me draw this figure again. This is the initial position of the drum. Okay. And uh, let us say this is the final position after it descends through a height h. Uh, so the distance traveled, let us say the distance traveled by the center of mass. distance traveled by the center of mass is L okay and uh, by this time so this is the horizontal so when it travels a distance L along the inclined plane it descends through a height let us say H okay so if uh, this uh, plane makes an angle beta with the horizontal if this angle is beta it's clear that this angle is also beta. Okay, um, so we have a relationship between H and L. Uh, we can say sine beta is equal to H by L. Okay, so this is clear. So the the the, the drum starts from rust and it uh, covers a distance L along the inclined plane. And uh, when it covers a distance L along the inclined plane, it has come down. A height h okay so this is a situation and uh, um, we are using this uh, coordinate system mm, suppose uh, x-axis is uh, along uh, positive x-axis along the inclined plane and y-axis is uh, perpendicular and upward to the inclined plane okay so uh, in order to apply the 
work energy theorem for translational part we should know what are the forces acting on the drum so we have discussed this problem in the previous class so what are the forces acting on the drum um, <clears throat> one is uh, the frictional force acting tangential and opposite to the direction of the uh, motion and uh, the weight of the drum is vertically downward w okay and there is normal reaction of the plane uh, at the point of contact so this will be acting perpendicular to the plane and this angle will be uh, the same as the angle of inclination beta okay how we get this uh, i have discussed in the previous problem okay this angle is theta beta in the previous problem we have chosen it as theta but here let us use a different symbol we, we will use theta for some other angle so this is normal reaction right so this w weight of the drum uh, we can resolve as w cos theta um, vertical to the perpendicular to the plane and w sin theta uh, parallel to the plane so w cos theta will be in the minus y direction Okay, so this n and w cos theta will cancel. N, co n minus w cos theta is 0. So we don't have to worry about motion along the y direction, so along the y axis. Okay, so the drum is rolling down the plane. So that is the motion along the x axis. So let us look at the x axis. So what is the net force along the x axis? Um, w sin theta is along the plus x direction. Okay, you can see that W cos theta will be along minus y direction, but W sin theta will be along the plus x direction. X direction is parallel to the plane, remember, parallel to the inclined plane. So W sin theta is parallel to the inclined plane and uh, that's along the plus x direction. And this uh, force F, uh, frictional force F is along the minus x uh, direction. So this is the net force. Okay, so the net force x axis net force is this y axis there is no net force so if you apply so we are not going to um, in the previous uh, discussion of this problem we took the net force um, then we proceeded from the okay um, we, we wrote Newton's second law but here we are not going to that uh, what we are going to do is we want to calculate what is the work done work done we are going to apply work energy theorem so what is the work done um, during translational motion right so the force net force uh, it's not sin theta uh, it's sin beta okay here also not cos theta but cos beta right uh, because this angle is beta same as the angle of inclination uh, so um, Okay, so uh, the, the, the W is a constant, beta is a constant, F is a constant. So this is a constant force acting on the drum. Okay, so what is the work done by the force in displacing the drum from initial position to the final position as we have shown in the figure. So the displacement, uh, the force remains constant. So the work done is simply force into displacement. So for F, W, uh, w sine beta minus F into the, the length covered by the drum is L along the inclined plane. Okay, So this work done is equal to change in kinetic energy. But the initial kinetic energy is zero. Initial position, the velocity is zero. So the final kinetic energy of the drum is half mv square. Okay, Where v is the velocity of the center of mass and uh, at the final position and uh, m is the total mass of the drum. Okay, So let us call it equation 1. Okay, so now let us apply um, the work energy theorem for the rotational part. Uh, <clears throat> so when you apply the rotational, uh, the kinetic, uh, the, the work energy theorem of the rotational uh, motion. Okay, in this formula, in writing equation of motion, I have written, I have applied work energy theorem for translational motion, which is this integral r i to r b f dot dr equal to half m v b square minus half m b a square 
okay we have applied that in, in writing this formula now for rotational motion the work energy theorem is integral theta a to theta b tau zero d theta okay where tau zero is the torque about the center of mass uh, final kinetic energy half i zero omega b square for kinetic energy of rotational motion half i zero omega a square okay <clears throat> now let us uh, apply this what is the torque about the center of mass okay the magnitude of the torque about the center of mass um, <clears throat> okay this is um, let us say um, during this uh, motion from initial position uh, look at this figure during the motion from the initial position this to the final position here okay let us assume that uh, the drum has uh, turned through an angle theta okay so yeah it's it, it's turned through an angle theta and uh, so torque about the center of mass is see um, so if you if your origin is the center of mass of the drum then uh, torque due to the weight is zero because it is acting at the same position and torque due to normal force is also zero because uh, the radial distance from the center of mass to the point of contact is uh, 180 degree with the normal force so the torque due to the normal force is also zero so only torque comes from the uh, this force uh, this frictional force so what is the magnitude of the torque um, Yeah, uh, the value is uh, magnitude is uh, perpendicular distance from the origin uh, to the force. Perpendicular distance is equal to the radius of the uh, drum, which is B, and the magnitude of the force is uh, F. So the magnitude of the torque is B into F. Okay, so this uh, torque is a constant. So. <coughs> If you uh, so uh, initially suppose uh, the initial orientation is um, zero, we can take the initial angle as zero, and the final angle that is uh, when it reaches the final position at a distance l from the initial position. Suppose it turns through an angle theta, so we can say that uh, this is B F into theta, left hand side. Okay, the total angle uh, changed is theta A is zero, theta B we can take it as theta. Okay. So this is BF theta that's equal to initial uh, initially it is at rest so there is no angular uh, speed so omega a is 0 and omega b we can take as simply omega so we have half i 0 omega square okay now <clears throat> uh, so theta is the angle through which it turns right um, let's say this uh, drum is uh, revolving along a circular path let us look at the rotation of the drum okay then uh, let us say somewhere here it's it's revolving like this so it is the initial position is somewhere here the final position is somewhere here okay it turns through an angle theta okay and this is the radius b so the distance traveled by the drum is uh, the total distance traveled by the drum is this much okay and this is b theta correct so when the drum turns through an angle theta um, the distance uh, traveled by the drum is the arc length that is b theta but uh, this distance is same as the uh, the length covered by the drum along the inclined plane okay so when the co it covers a length l along the inclined plane it is, it is actually turned through an angle theta so there is a connection here b theta we can write as l okay so in this expression instead of b theta if we write l we get f into l is equal to half i zero omega square this is equation two okay 
so in equation 1 we get uh, the work done uh, during by the for the translational motion work done is equal to change in kinetic energy the work energy theorem we have applied there in equation 2 we have obtained work done uh, by the torque about the center of mass during the rotational motion of the um, drum around its center of mass okay so work done by the torque is equal to the rotational kinetic energy of i0 omega square okay one point we have to notice here is um, the frictional force is not dissipative in this uh, problem uh, if we look at equation one because of frictional force the work it, it uh, the, the energy of the the energy of the drum decreases by an amount f into l right okay energy the, it's minus it's negative so the energy decreases by an amount f into l so the kind there is a decrease in kinetic energy by an amount uh, translational kinetic energy by an amount f into l in equation one but when we look at equation two this uh, frictional force is the reason for the torque okay so the work done by this torque has increased the rotational kinetic energy by the amount f into l okay so whatever be the decrease in translational kinetic energy has become an increase in rotational kinetic energy so the role of the frictional force here is to change the mechanical energy from one form from translational kinetic energy to another form to rotational kinetic energy it's not dissipative here okay so let's uh, move forward let us uh, our aim is to calculate uh, what is the velocity right when it uh, travels through a height h um, so okay so let's convert uh, this into this l into h okay so let me write it like this so instead of this f into l okay So let us uh, <coughs> rewrite this f into l uh, right hand side we can rewrite let us see what is i0 it's the uh, moment of inertia of the drum about its uh, center of mass moment of inertia of the drum which is a solid cylinder about its center of mass is half m r square which uh, radius here is b so half m b square the expression is the same as that of uh, a disc a uniform disc and uh, omega also we can convert into linear velocity and the relationship is uh, v is equal to b times omega so instead of omega we can write um, so what is this half i0 is half m b square and instead of omega we can write b square by v by b that is uh, b square by b square okay so this is equal to 1 by 4 m b square Okay, F into L. Okay, so uh, let us go to equation one. Let us substitute this F into L in equation one. Uh, so equation one becomes let us look at equation 1 if I open the bracket we get uh, W sin beta into L minus F into L this is equation 1 is equal to half mv square right um, so here in equation 3 this uh, F into L is 1 by 4 mv square and uh, W is mg sin beta into l is what is the relationship okay look at this uh, sin beta into sin beta is equal to h by l so l sin beta into l is h so we can put h here minus f into l is 1 by 4 mv square that's equal to half mv square so mgh is equal to 1 by 4 mv square if you take to the right it becomes plus so we get 3 by 4 mv square m will cancel and uh, we want to find out what is the velocity so velocity of the center of mass 
when it drops through a height h is 4 by 3 gh right square root so this is the result 4 by square root of 4 by 3 times gh so when it drops through a height h the velocity of the center of mass is this much okay here we have uh, not used uh, second law of motion newton's second law of motion but uh, directly we have used work energy theorem work energy theorem for translation part in equation one work energy theorem for rotation part in equation two okay this is the way we can analyze um, motion involving both translation and rotation uh, from the point of view of um, work energy theorem